Good morning and welcome to this the lecture number 35 of the course water resource systems modeling techniques and analysis. So, in the last lecture we discussed the fuzzy optimization. In fact, we just introduced the fuzzy optimization. Recall that the fuzzy optimization essentially gives a latitude in the constraints as well as in the objective function. What the crisp op objective uh, crisp optimization problem uh, provided as a crisp solution, we start relaxing that solution and then start looking at the constraints where we introduce certain latitude or relaxation or flexibility in the constraints. Now, these types of problems are essentially uh, useful when you have let us say the resource constraints. For example, we may say x 1 is less than or equal to 4, where x 1 is one of the resources. Then we want to say that x 1 is not exactly less than or equal to 4, we, may, we are also accepting solutions which are slightly greater than 4 also. That means, we start relaxing the right hand side values of the constraints and then start looking at flexible solutions. And these types of optimization problems are essentially useful when you have a large number of players, stakeholders or large number of objectives each conflicting with the, uh, the other one and then you are looking at acceptability of solutions. That means, the stakeholders provide their level of acceptability of solutions and so on. So, whenever there is a subjective uh, judgment that is involved, subjective level of acceptability that is involved, we convert these crisp optimization problems into fuzzy optimization problems and then address it using the techniques that we are uh, dealing with now. So, essentially uh, the fuzzy decision, the concept of the fuzzy decision if you recall, uh, the fuzzy uh, goals and the constraints or the fuzzy objectives and the constraints are all represented by their membership functions, their uh, respective membership functions. <coughs> Say for example, the goal f 1 which is a function of x states here in this particular uh, example that the lower the value of x 1, uh, the better it is. The lower the value of x, the better it is for this particular goal. And this goal here, goal f 2 says that the higher the value of x 1, the better it is. So, these two are conflicting and they are represented by their membership functions. The intersection of the two goals forms the decision z and th this in fact is the membership function for the decision z, which is given by the intersection of these two and remember the intersection of two fuzzy sets is simply the minimum value of the membership function at uh, each of the x 1 values. For, for example, we start taking the minimum value between f 1 and f 2 and then start going here because there is no f 2 here, uh, f 2 is 0 here, we take this value and then the minimum value at all these points will lead to this particular set or this particular membership function for the decision z. It is within this decision z that we are looking at the maximum membership function value. So, in the case of conflicting goals like this, we define the fuzzy membership function for the decision z and then look at that particular value of x which will maximum which will provide us the maximum value of the membership function on the decision z. And that is the problem that we wrote like this maximize lambda subject to these are essentially the left hand sides of the membership functions greater than or equal to lambda. So, I can in fact write this simply as the membership function for the constraint b x i which is greater than or equal to lambda. What does this constraint ensure? This constraint ensures that the left hand side which are the membership function values associated with the particular value of x that defines the left hand side value of the particular constraint is a minimum value. So, this is the minimum of the membership functions that in fact defines the space z here, the membership function for the set z here and then through maximizing lambda, we are looking at that particular value of the membership function so defined, which is the minimum value of the membership function. We are looking at the maximum value of lambda there. 
So, these are in fact called as a max min type of problems where we are looking at the minimum value of the membership function through this constraint through this set of constraints and then such minimum values we are maximizing. So, that is a max min type of problems. All right, what we will do is now we will take a simple crisp linear programming problem. The type of problems that we are uh, uh, addressing now are in fact the fuzzy linear programming problems because we are saying that all these are linear membership functions and also we are introducing the non-negativity concept, non-negativity condition and therefore, these are the fuzzy linear programming problems. So, we will just take a crisp problem that uh, we solved earlier on in the linear programming case when I introduce the linear programming I put this particular uh, simple problem just a two variable uh, problem with simple constraints here we, you can also solve it using the graphical method. So, maximize z is equal to 3 x 1 plus 5 x 2 x 1 less than or equal to 4 2 x 2 less than or equal to 6 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 less than or equal to 18 this is a simple problem with non negativity conditions. The solution for this is x 1 is equal to 2 x 2 is equal to 6 and z is equal to 36. What this problem states is that the solution should be such that x 1 has to be always less than or equal to 4 and 2 x 2 has to be always less than or equal to 12 or x 2 is less than or equal to 6 and 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 is less than or equal to 18. This is what this problem states and we obtain the value of z as 36 for such a crisp problem. We use the solution of the crisp problem in general as a guide to look at the type of objective function values that you can expect. For example, in this case you got an objective function value of 36. So, we know that the objective function value can be around 36, 38 or it may be 34 and so on. So, if you are looking at maximization uh, problem you may say that I would like my objective function value to be around 37, 38 and so on and then look at the constraints x 1 is less than or equal to 4 because you are saying my objective function can be larger than this particular objective function. You may want to relax the constraints a little bit say that x 1 I would prefer to be less than or equal to 4, but I am not averse to taking so solutions which are slightly more than 4 for x 1 more than 4 and therefore, we relax this constraint and put it as a con fuzzy constraint with its associated fuzzy membership function and that is what we do for all the constraints. So, we set the objective function as a fuzzy objective function, we set all the constraints as fuzzy constraints and then formulate this crisp problem as a uh, fuzzy problem, a fuzzy linear programming problem. So, recall that my general form of the fuzzy optimization is this maximize lambda subject to the membership functions for the ith constraint greater than or equal to lambda. Now, when I say membership function for the ith constraint, it also includes the objective function of the original problem because this also we convert it into a fuzzy constraint and then handle everything as fuzzy constraints. So, in general we write this as maximize lambda subject to set of constraints associated with each of the um, constraint in the original problem including the objective function and the non negativity condition. So, we can simply write this instead of going through all this b i double dash etcetera I will simply say this is the membership function for the i th constraint b x of i greater than or equal to lambda. So, remember what we are saying here is that including the objective function we set the membership functions to be greater than or equal to lambda and then that value of lambda we maximize. So, this ensures the minimum value of the membership functions for the i constraints and then that minimum value we are maximizing that is the idea there. And this is the type of uh, membership function that uh, we consider it can be either uh, this way or you can also have the membership function the other way which means the higher the better kind of membership function. So, you can either have this or can have this. So, we will look at this problem now again z is equal to 3 x 1 plus 5 x 2 x 1 less than or equal to 4 and so on. For the z we will form the membership function based on the objective function value that we obtained 
in the crisp solution. And then we will relax these constraints and then give some latitude and then define the membership functions accordingly. Because it is a maximization problem, what we are referring to is the higher the objective function value, the better it is. So, I expect a solution somewhere around 36 and then I will say that the higher the, uh, so, uh, the objective function value, the better it is. So, what we will do is that I will put my mu is equal to 0 for the objective function. So, I am formulating now the membership functions for the objective function. I will say my mu is equal to 0 at z is equal to 36. That means, objective function value is 36 and I would prefer the solution to be more than 38. So, at 38, I will put a membership function value of 1. Similarly, you go to the constraints, x1 is less than or equal to 4. So, I will say that my mu is equal to 1 for the membership function corresponds to the left hand side to be equal to 4. That means, x1 should be less than or equal to 4 in that particular case. But I am not averse to the solutions up to 6. So, I can go up to 6 for that particular constraint which means essentially the left right hand side we are relaxing a bit here. Instead of saying 4, I am saying up to 6 it is acceptable, but as it crosses 4, my degree of acceptability becomes smaller and smaller. So, that is what is reflected here. So, at mu is equal to 1, my value is 4 and anything less than 4 is preferred because it has mu is equal to 1 anything more than 4 is acceptable up to a distance of 2 which is which leads to the constraint value being equal to 6 and beyond 6 it is mu is equal to 0 again. Similarly, constraint 2 it says x 2 is less than or equal to 6 and that we will put it as x 2 is less than or equal to 6 is preferred, but we are not averse to going up to 10 and with a lesser degree of acceptability as x 2 moves away from 6 here, my acceptability of the solution becomes smaller and smaller and that is what is reflected by this membership function and that is how we have formulate the constraint. Similarly, that last constraint 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2, we will say that 18 is acceptable that is here 18 is equal to mu is equal to 1. So, anything less than or equal to 18 is preferred, but we can go up to 25 with reducing degree of acceptability. So, this is how we formulate the fuzzy membership functions associated with the objective function and the three constraints in this example. Now, remember some of the constraints may be of greater than or equal to type, in which case you have to formulate the constraints accordingly. So, in this particular case, I have put all of them as less than or equal to. If someone, some constraint was greater than or equal to type, then you may get uh, constraint of uh, a membership function of this type. Okay, now, we will uh, formulate the crisp equivalent of that. You look at the objective function constraint, this particular constraint. So, 36 to 38, we are saying that my mu is between 36 to 38. So, I will put 3 x 1 plus 5 x 2, which is a objective function value here, 3 x 1 plus 5 x 2 that is b x i minus 36. So, I am just writing the mu x mu b x for this region here 36 to 38. So, that we will write it as 3 x 1 plus 5 x 2 minus 36 divided by 2. This 2 is this distance here going by uh, the earlier definitions that we have used. So, essentially what I am writing is any general value of b x i in between, I will put the uh, objective function value in terms of this. So, this is the objective function value membership function. So, this is membership function for the objective function value. Similarly, uh, then we will uh, simplify this and then write this as the constraint. This becomes a constraint corresponding to the objective function value. That is, we will say this as the fuzzy constraint for the OF. 
remember in doing this what we achieved is that we are saying that I would prefer the solution to be higher than 36 and then preferably more than 38. So, between 38 and 36 my degree of acceptability comes down and the objective function is 3 x 1 plus 5 x 2 and therefore, we write that particular statement as 1.5 x 1 plus 2.5 x 2 minus 18. Similarly, for each of the constraints we do for, for example, we take x 1 is less than or equal to 4 as the constraint and then we use this membership function and then write this as the crisp equivalent. So, we are writing for any level in between here. Similarly, for the next constraint 2 x 2 is less than or equal to uh, 12. So, I am writing this as x 2 is less than or equal to 6 and that is a constraint that uh, is uh, defined here the membership function for that particular constraint and then we get this as the crisp equivalent. We are writing the expression again for any middle value any given value here of x 2 between 6 and 10. Similarly, the third constraint 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 less than or equal to 18. So, this is a constraint left hand side value. So, this is actually 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 along this direction. And then we put that use the same uh, method, uh, same method of con converting and write the expression for any value in between 18 and 25 and that is the value that you get here. So, what we have done is we have converted the objective function using the membership function for the objective function into one constraint. We have converted the first constraint into, into another uh, constraint using the membership functions. We have converted similarly all the constraints uh, using the membership function. So, the crisp equivalent of the fuzzy LP becomes this now. Remember, we started with the crisp problem, then we relax the constraints and formulated also the objective function as a fuzzy obje objective function and looked and formulated a fuzzy linear programming, where we are maximizing lambda subject to each of the membership functions being greater than or equal to lambda. And that is how we are ensuring that we are maximizing the minimum value of the membership function of the decision space z. And then we convert this fuzzy LP into a crisp form so that we can solve the uh, linear programming problems. And this is the crisp form. So, this is maximized lambda subject to each, each of these constraints and this is the non-negativity constraint. Remember all of these constraints we have just derived based on the membership functions that we have derived, uh, we have defined earlier. So, this is the crisp equivalent. We can solve this using the linear programming uh, software or uh, including even uh, you can use the uh, perhaps graphical method will not be easy because you have lambda also as one of the decision variables here. So, there are three decision variables x 1, x 2 and lambda. So, you use any of the methods uh, use a simplex method or use a simple uh, software like lingo and then you can solve. When you solve this you compare it with what you had obtained earlier. So, we got the non fuzzy solution as x 1 is equal to 2, x 2 is equal to 6 and z is equal to 36. This is a crisp solution before we converted into fuzzy optimization and then we relax the constraints and then also formulated the objective function as a fuzzy ob objective function and then solve the fuzzy linear programming x 1 becomes 1.95. So, I am sh showing the solution for this now x 1 becomes 1.95 x 2 was 6 earlier that becomes 6.39 and z is 36 here this becomes 37.8. What did it achieve now? You look at the first constraint x 1 was less than or equal to 4. So, it has reduced x 1 further and x 2 was less than or equal to 6 
but we have said that we are not averse to going up to 10. If you look at the membership function for the second constraint 2 x 2 is less than or equal to 12 or x 2 is less than or equal to 6. We said that while we would prefer the solution to be less than 6, we do not mind going up to 10 with a reduction in our acceptability. In the solution for the crisp optimization problem, x 2 took a value of 6. Look at this, x 2 took a value of 6. So, that was a binding constraint. And then when you relax this, it had a more flexibility to play around with solutions. So, instead of saying that x 2 is exactly 6, we are saying that we are not averse to going slightly higher than 6. And therefore, it immediately jumped onto this and put a value of 6.39. Whereas, the first constraint which was x 1 less than or equal to 4 was not a binding uh, constraint in the solution because x 1 is 2 in the solution and therefore, it did not uh, the solution did not matter much. It just went into 1.95, it just reduced the value of x 1, but it could achieve a value of 37.8. Why could it not go to further solutions when my uh, membership function value for z is in fact the higher greater than 38 you will have 1. So, it has come very close to 38, but it could not reach 38 quite because of the last constraint. We also had another constraint 2 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 and because of these all the three constraints uh, it could not achieve a solution more than 37 point whatever it could get 37.8. But essentially it is not the actual values that are important here in this particular case that we could go from 36 to 37.8 was not the idea. The idea is to provide latitude in decision making or flexibility in decision making. We are essentially saying that if our resource constraints are slightly relaxed and then we become more flexible in our uh, optimization, then these are the solutions that we get. So, essentially what we are saying is that instead of saying x 1 has to be less than or equal to 4 or for example, the second constraint 2 x 2 has to be less than or equal to 6. If we say that we would prefer 2 x 2 to be I am sorry 2 x 2 to be less than or equal to 12, but we are not averse to slightly relaxing this. That means x 2 can be greater than or equal to 6 and that is the type of solution that uh, uh, we get. So, the fuzzy linear programming essentially allows some latitude in the decision making. Instead of maximizing or minimizing an objective function, what we are now doing is uh, look at the objective function value of the fuzzy optimization. We are saying maximize lambda. The identity of the initial objective function namely maximize z is equal to 3 x 1 plus 5 x 2 has been lost in the final object uh, fuzzy optimization problem objective function but it has been accounted for in one of the constraints as fuzzy constraint. So, instead of maximizing or minimizing an objective function, what we do in the fuzzy optimization is that a level of satisfaction or for permissible values is defined and we use this level of satisfaction as a measure and then optimize the objective function value in the fuzzy optimization. The fuzzy optimization is in fact more useful when there are conflicting objectives, when there are number of stakeholders all of whom express their level of acceptability to different solutions. In fact, the interpretation of the membership function you should not lose sight. The membership functions for the uh, uh, goals here as shown here is what is important. What it shows is that these two are conflicting goal f 1 and goal f 2 are conflicting. Similarly, you may have several such goals and not necessarily linear goals your uh, linear membership functions you may have several non linear membership functions and so on and uh, defined on several variables and therefore, it becomes a space rather than uh, just uh, intersection of lines. 
among such conflicting objective functions, the degrees of acceptability of solutions for different players or different stakeholders will be different and then you are looking at the best compromise solution. So, one goal says this is the type of solution that is preferred, the other goal says this is the type of solution that is preferred. They are both conflicting and you are achieving the best compromise solution. So, the fuzzy optimization is ideally suited whenever there is a large conflict in the system, there are large number of linguistically stated goals which can be converted to associated membership functions. You also want to introduce latitude in the decision making, you want to provide or impart some flexibility in the decision making. In such situations, the fuzzy optimization becomes extremely uh, handy and the solutions are quite simple as, uh, as I just demonstrated. All you have to do is convert the fuzzy uh, linear programming into crisp linear programming using the membership functions and then maximize the level of acceptance. Lambda is in fact the level of satisfaction in the system and this is also called as the best compromise solution. So, with that brief background now, we will look at some applications. Now, the typical uh, application that I will deal with for the fuzzy optimization is a general water quality control problem, uh, which has large number of stakeholders and it also has a degree of conflict. For example, you are looking at the water quality in a stream when there is an effluent discharge that is uh, uh, taking place at a particular location. So, straight away you would uh, look at this problem from two different perspectives. One is to use the assimilative capacity of the river to the best extent possible, so that the waste can be discharged into the river, the industrial or municipal effluents etcetera can be discharged into the river. So, the rivers are receptacle, receptacles of the effluent discharges and therefore, you would like to make the best use of the assimilative capacity of the river, so that the municipal industrial waste etcetera may be perhaps after certain treatment can be discharged into the water bodies like rivers. The other perspective of looking at which is also equally important is that I would like to maintain the water quality above a certain threshold value. So, we would not want to deteriorate the water quality beyond a certain point. So, on one side we are saying that the water quality should be as high as possible. On the other side we are saying that the assimilative capacity should be used to the best extent possible and therefore, it should be uh, we should be able to discharge the effluents to as high a level as possible, both in terms of the volume as well as in terms of the concentrations of the uh, pollutants themselves. So, these are two straight away conflicting uh, goals. One is to maintain the water quality as high as possible, the other one is to discharge effluents to as large a quantity as possible, so that the assimilative capacity of the river is uh, utilized to the best extent possible. Now, these are typical conflicting goals that we come across in most of the development and environmental uh, situations, development versus environmental. So, it uh, uh, this particular problem will demonstrate that it should not be de development versus environmental, it will be development and environmental together where there are, there are conflicts and then we arrive at there are methodologies which are the fuzzy optimization methodologies through which we can arrive at best compromise solutions, so that the environment is not degraded, yet at the same time you are able to uh, maintain the development at certain level. So, we will look at this particular uh, example now, this is a stream water quality control problem, this is a stream and there is another stream that joins at this location, this is a general figure, general stream. There are effluent discharges the D1, D2, D3, etcetera that I am showing here are the effluent discharges. Uh, it is shown here, D i m is discharger, this is the effluent discharger. 
Now, these are typically either municipal effluents or the industrial effluents. And these are the point sources that is point sources of pollutions. Now, we are interested in maintaining the water quality at several locations such as these shown by dots here. So, these are the water quality checkpoints that means, we would like to maintain the water quality at several locations at some pre specified levels. In fact, we would like to make the water quality as high as possible at these locations. Then, we may also have a non point source pollution, which is either uniformly adding the uh, to the stream or it may be you know adding to the stream in a non uniform manner. So, this uh, may be a non point source pollution. Now, in this problem what is it that we want to achieve? Let us say that we are looking at a particular checkpoint 19. The water quality at this particular location is determined by what is happening upstream of that location all of this. So, there is a uh, there is a dilution effect taking place because of the stream flows. There is also re aeration and uh, other processes that are taking place because of the immediate atmosphere in which the water is con uh, contact and the effluents that are uh, being discharged into the stream. Given the effluent discharges at various locations, it is possible through mathematical models to obtain the water quality at this location. So, for the discussion purpose, you just assume that if I specify let us say the BOD loads biochemical oxygen demand loads at these various locations in the stream, it is possible for us to obtain the dissolved oxygen at this particular location and similarly for any other location. So, given the upstream conditions, you, it should be possible for you to get the water quality at these locations. Remember the water quality at this location will also depend on the hydraulics of the system. For example, what is the time it takes for the flow to come from this point to this point? What is the uh, cross section? What is the uh, roughness coefficient and all the open channel characteristics and so on? They will all determine how the flow takes place in all these streams and then reaches this particular point. The effluent discharge or the pollutant, let us say you put a BOD the effect of BOD on the DO at this location is governed by certain transport processes and the transport processes for non reactive pollutants can, can also be uh, formulated using uh, mathematical models. So, for the discussion of this optimization problem, you assume that uh, the water quality at a particular location can be determined through mathematical models for given loadings of the effluent discharges for given hydraulics of the system. That means, we specify the discharge, we specify the cross section at various locations, we also specify the temperature, relative humidity etcetera. So, that the uh, uh, reaction rates can be determined and so on. So, all the physical uh, processes that govern are all known and the parameters thereof are, can all be determined. Now, the question is let us say for a given level of discharges D 1, D 2, D 3 etcetera, these are the effluent discharges for given levels, the water quality at this point is very bad. That means, the dissolved oxygen level may have reached 3 uh, mg per liter or some such thing. So, we are looking at uh, the water quality B indicator as dissolved oxygen. So, you would like to increase the dissolved oxygen level 
from the existing 3 to 6 let us say that at this point we want to have the water quality such that the dissolved oxygen is at least 6 mg per liter. Whereas, if you do not have any treatments here it would be 3 mg per liter. Then you start looking at the treatments that need to be given. That means, there was a certain effluent load that was coming. We say that this is not acceptable you start treating now. So, that the water quality at a particular location increases. The decision then becomes how much to be treated, how much of the discharge to be treated, effluent discharge to be treated at this location, at this location, etcetera. So, at each of the given uh, point sources of discharges, what is the level of treatment that you need to achieve? That is a question. It is easier to easy to say that you do not discharge anything, that means 100 percent treatment. Uh, that is even if you are generating some uh, pollutants here or the effluents here waste here you make sure that 100 percent of that is treated and let into the river but that is practically not possible because the F, uh, waste has to be discharged somewhere and the rivers have been good receptacles of the waste and therefore the question that is more pertinent is that you arrive at optimal treatments at all of these locations such that the water quality is not deteriorated beyond a certain point or the water quality is maintained at least up to a certain level at several check checkpoints. So, the question that we pose is to we want to object uh, obtain the best compromise solutions for effluent fraction removal levels. The fraction removal levels are in fact the treatment levels, these are the treatment levels. Why we say best compromise solution? Because there is a degree of conflict associated in this uh, uh, associated with this problem. The degree of conflict arises because of the sets of objectives that are conflicting with each other. Namely, one corresponding to the pollution control agencies who would like to maintain the water quality to be as high as possible. The other corresponding to the dischargers themselves or the developmental goals where you would like to discharge as much as possible into the uh, stream. The waste that is generated after treatment, after certain treatment you would like to discharge it into the stream. Now, the question is what is the optimal treatment? So, that the uh, water quality is maintained yet at the same time the costs of treatment are not uh, uh, very high or the costs are minimized. So, on one side you would like to maintain the cost of treatment to be low on the other side you would like to maintain a high water quality. These two are conflicting and these two are conflicting with respect to several of the uh, sources here. For, for example, we may look at different checkpoints and at each of the checkpoints you may want to have an objective. At each of the discharger you may want to have an objective, uh, objective in terms of uh, its acceptability, the solutions acceptability. For each of the pollutant you may have a uh, degree of acceptability. So, there are a large number of goals associated with the number of pollutants, associated with the number of locations at which you would like to achieve the solution that is the checkpoints and also associated with the uh, water quality indicators themselves. For example, you may form one uh, membership function associated with dissolved oxygen, another with nitrates for example, another with pH, another with turbidity and so on. So, with respect to different water quality indicators you may have different responses. With respect to different dischargers you may have different responses. For example, D 1 may have its own acceptability, D 2 may have its own acceptability, acceptability and so on. Then from the pollution control angle you may have at different locations you may have different responses. For example, my response to a, a site 17 may be much different from the response to si uh, response at site 22, where I may want to use the water for uh, gardening purposes, for irrigation purposes and so on and therefore, the water quality requirements there will be much different from uh, if I am simply uh, using the water for uh, some other purposes, uh, any other non-potable purposes. And therefore, your 
degree of acceptability of solutions will be different also at different locations. And therefore, you will have a large number of membership functions associated with this problem. So, this problem can be posed as a general fuzzy optimization problem and then form objective uh, form the membership functions and then look at the optimal solutions. So, these are uh, some uh, uncertainties that we introduce here. For example, the randomness in stream flow can be addressed in this and then effluent flow temperature and reaction rates. Uh, the fuzziness is what is our uh, uh, focus in this. We want to address the fuzziness due to water quality standards that means, how much can be let down here. And even if the water quality standards are met, can we further optimize the solutions? Let us say that the uh, water quality standards say that at a particular location, your BOD should not be more than 30 mg per liter or something for the effluent. So, all of them maintain 30 mg per liter. Yet at the same, uh, even with this, the water quality at a particular location is not acceptable. Then we look at the optimal solutions and that we uh, form using the fuzzy membership functions. So, we will introduce this problem now. What we will do is a checkpoint L, we denote the concentration level for water quality parameter I. Now, these are some general notations. As I said, these water quality parameters can be uh, DO at a particular level or you may talk about dissolved oxygen deficit instead of talking about the absolute values of DO, nitrate levels, pH level turbidity level and so on. So, the, those are the water quality parameter and the concentration level at checkpoint L we call it as C i L. Now, we may have a desirable level for the particular uh, pollutant I or the water quality parameter I at location L. So, this we put it as C i L D. Now, I am starting to formulate the fuzzy membership functions. So, we say that there are two players now here, two major players. One is the pollution control agency, another is the dischargers, set of dischargers. So, we say that the PCA or the pollution control agency sets a desirable level C i l d, this is a desirable level and also a minimum permissible level C i l l which means that you cannot go below C i l l, but I would like to have as high as C i l d. And in this particular case, we may say that C i l l is greater than C i l d. For example, if you are looking at D o deficit, the D o deficit, the minimum permissible level will be higher than the desirable level. So, depending on the type of water quality parameter i that you are looking at, these conditions can be formulated. Then we formulate the fuzzy goals for the water quality management. For example, we are saying that C i l is the concentration level of the water quality parameter i and it is also a function of the fraction removal level uh, x i m n how if you look at the uh, transport process, let us say that uh, at a particular location in the stream, you have the effluent coming at a particular location. Let us say this is x and you are interested in the concentration C i l and this is the location l. As you treat this, that is, this is the fraction removal level. So, as you change x, your C i l will, will be different. The relationship between what is coming here and what is the result here can be written as uh, crisp mathematical problems. So, you can determine C i l which is a concentration of the water quality parameter i at the location l as a function of the fraction removal level at the discharger 
m let us say this is the discharger m. So, at the discharger m you are treating certain effluent and you can determine the C i l corresponding to that that is the idea there. So, with uh, these functions in uh, place we say that x i m n and C i l are uh, dependent on uh, that is C i l is dependent on x i m n where x i m n is the fraction removal levels or the treatment level of the pollutant n from the discharger m for the control of water quality parameter i. Why I am stressing this so much is that the responses can be much different for different pollutants, different discharges, different locations as well as for different water quality parameters and all these responses together will form a set of membership functions and from the membership functions you want to look at the optimal solutions that is the idea there. So, then we define the fuzzy goals that means, now we are coming to the objective functions. Look at one of the goals of the uh, pollution control agency we will state in linguistic terms first and then convert it into a fuzzy uh, membership function. So, we say that our goal is to make the concentration level C i l of the water quality parameter i at the checkpoint l as close as possible to the desirable level C i l d. So, that the water quality at the checkpoint l is enhanced with respect to the water quality parameter i for all i and l. This is the most general statement of the pollution control agencies objective or goal but you look at the goal of the dischargers. They say that make the fraction removal level x i m n as close as possible to the aspiration level. Each of the dischargers may say that I, I would like to have my uh, treatment level at x l i m n. That means, the lower the better is the uh, dischargers goal here fuzzy goal for all i, m and n. Now, these goals can be stated as fuzzy goals and then we formulate the fuzzy membership functions. There are all these details here available, but we will go to how we formulate the fuzzy membership functions now. Remember, if we are looking at a water quality parameter such as the dissolved oxygen, we will be saying the higher the better. So, this is on the x axis is the concentration of the dissolved oxygen for example, then we are saying the higher the better. So, in general we may have a non-linear membership function such as this or a linear membership function such as this and this is the desired level and this is the lower level. That means, we will say that anything less than this is not acceptable and we would prefer the oxygen concentration to be higher than this. This we will define for all L and this can be defined for all similar I, similar I in, in the sense that the higher the better. There may be uh, dissolved oxygen, the higher the better. These kind of uh, uh, water quality parameters we may use such members functions. So, this can be generally written as in a general sense it can be written as a non-linear function like this and the alpha I L which is the index here will determine the exact shape of this. For example, alpha i l is equal to 1 will give you a linear shape and uh, so on. So, if alpha i l is less than 1 you will get this shape. Now, the shape of the membership function at a particular location will decide the response or the acceptability of the solution. For example, if my DO level is here, this is my degree of acceptability if we follow this membership function this will be my degree of acceptability if we follow the linear membership function and so on. So, like this we also formulate the membership function for the discharges. So, for the discharges we will say that the lower the treatment levels the better it is. So, we may formulate non-linear membership functions like this or linear membership function like this and then put it in a general form where the beta i m n for the water quality parameter i for the discharger m for the pollutant n. So, like this we may formulate membership functions associated with each of the i m and n 
depending on the responses that you get from the particular discharges for the, the given water quality parameter and then essentially this membership function shows that the lower the treatment level the better that is a uh, that is a implication of the membership function. Whereas, for the pollution control agency this is the higher the water quality indicator the better it is that is a pollution control agencies uh, membership function. So, you have a large number of sets of membership functions now associated with the goals of the pollution control agency and the discharges. All of these will pull together and then look at the best compromise solution that comes out of this. How do we formulate that? We go, uh, go to the fuzzy optimization, use the general fuzzy optimization technique where I will write mu f i of x which is a membership function. These are the membership functions associated with that is the left hand side, left hand side is the membership function. which include the goals of both the discharges as well as pollu uh, pollution control agencies. Now, x is a vector of treatment levels in this case. Uh, what I mean by that is that x will be x 1, x 2, x 3, etc. at various discharges what is the level of treatment that you want to give. Now, these will determine the concentration C i l and therefore, it will define the membership function for the pollution control agency. So, your decisions that you are making will be on x what is the optimal treatment level. From the x you transfer uh, the membership function values into the pollution control agency goals which are associated with C i l which is a concentration of the water quality indicator i at the location l. How do we do this? We use uh, water quality simulators to obtain the concentration at a particular location for a given discharge uh, given treatment level x at a particular point upstream of that. And then formulate the uh, general fuzzy optimization using the fuzzy constraints and the crisp constraints. You may also have some crisp constraints uh, for example, the technological limits on treatment levels that are possible. They will define a set of crisp constraints and so on. So, you may ha also have physically based crisp constraints you use all of that and formulate the fuzzy optimization technique uh, problem. So, in the particular case what we will do is that for the pollution control agency we have these sets of goals these sets of fuzzy constraints for the discharges you have these sets of constraints. Remember in fuzzy optimization you pick up the fuzzy membership function and put it greater than or equal to lambda and you are maximizing the particular value of lambda that is that is the idea here. And these are the crisp constraints what we, may, we are saying here is that the C i l which is a concentration of the water quality parameter i at location l must be within a certain range. Similarly, my treatment level should be within a certain range. Now, these are uh, uh, the maximum limits or the minimum acceptable levels. So, like this we formulate the general fuzzy optimization problem and then uh, solve the uh, problem. Now, there is one uh, small technical detail here is that as I said the fraction removal levels at a particular location in the river will determine the concentration of the water quality parameter for example, the dissolved oxygen is a water quality indi index or water quality parameter at a particular location. If you apply certain treatment level upstream of that then this water quality parameter will uh, water quality at this particular location will enhance and the relationship between the water quality at a particular location here and the upstream treatment levels that you are giving can be determined through some mathematical uh, formulations. Uh, in this course, we will not worry too much about it. It is all available in the literature. So, if you, if you are uh, uh, doing a course on water quality modeling, you will know all uh, these techniques. Right now, what we will do is we will assume that such relationships are available and typically they look like this. So, this uh, water quality concentration at a particular location L can be written as a function of what has happened 
upstream of that with respect to the treatment and the functional nature here. So, we will uh, look at the concentration C i l of the water quality parameter i at the checkpoint l is related to the fraction removal level x i m n and also l i p n. Now, l i p n is the concentration of the pollutant n from the uncontrollable source, which means that you have also apart from the poly, uh, control level source which are the uh, point sources, you may also account for non point sources. So, in general the water quality parameter here is a aggregate effect of the point sources as well as the non point sources. Now, this is how you transfer the decisions that you take x i m n on to the water quality. Uh, indicators. Once you know the water quality indicator, you know what are the associated membership function values and therefore, you have to relate the x i m n with c i l and then pick up the associated membership function values and then put it in the object uh, fuzzy optimization problem. Now, that is what we do. Uh, we will look at uh, this particular example <coughs> and uh, look at the uh, numerical values that we obtain when we solve uh, a problem for optimal solutions for the treatment levels when there is a conflict between the dischargers and the pollution control agencies. So, in the next lecture, I will continue this example and demonstrate and show how the fuzzy membership functions can be quantified for such a problem and then we use these fuzzy membership functions into fuzzy optimization and then look at the solutions. Remember, it is not just the technique that is important here. It is the interpretation of the uh, results that are also uh, that is also important and how we formulate the membership functions uh, to represent certain goals, certain constraints and so on are more important are uh, extremely important here. For example, if you are looking at the purpose of irrigation what should be your uh, fuzzy membership function. If you are looking at reservoir operation for a general purpose meeting the demands and so on, what should be your membership function. For the water quality, what should be your membership function and so on. So, the way you formulate the responses from different users for a general water resource problem is what is uh, important. So, the, we will discuss these nuances in the next lecture and look at the solutions and the interpretation of the solutions. So, thank you for your attention. We will continue the discussion in the next class.